Alex, you work with two of the greatest architects of the 20th century, Ian Pei and Richard Meyer. What were the notable difference between Pei and Meyer? Well, they were both very elegant uh, men, and they were also somewhat distant. They would come around the office, actually Meyer would come around the office once a day and kind of look at your drawings and make a few scribbles and then walk around. <laughs> And then I.M. Pei, was, he traveled so much, he was almost a celebrity in his own office. They both taught me that even the largest project, the, the Louvre or uh, Grand Museum, start with a few lines on a piece of paper. So the concept for anything, even the largest of buildings or ideas, is, comes from a simple idea that can be sketched by hand. I did work under people and I, you know, I uh, worked with Merce Cunningham for many years and learned, you know, a lot from him in, in, at the end of his life and worked with other artists um, and other architects and I think that being sort of inside someone else's practice, trying to understand how they formulate their ideas is something that's really uh, important. Working under someone else, you get to learn about like crisis, right. like, crisis management. Right. Which in our business hopefully doesn't come around that often. <laughs> Although it, every it, it, day it in ends architecture, up, that's yeah. sure. Yeah, in our business, it's uh -huh. just like you know, there's always an right because you're also dependent upon other people. I mean, other people have to manufacture or you know produce something, and it's very much uh, you know you are kind of creating the diagram or the instructions, but then it has to be executed by others. Whereas I think when you do a drawing, it's very much your own hand directly or yeah, and even a lot, a lot of the stuff that Snark Architecture makes, you know, we try to keep as, as much of it in-house. I mean, I operate at a much different scale than you. You know, we, we never made spaces like that. Well, we've made spaces that are this size, but they're temporary or, you know, I'm thinking of the cavern project that we right. did at Storefront. Um, oh, yeah, that was great. We filled the entire space solid with foam, and over the course of six weeks with my team, we dug out a space almost like tunneling. Most people think that we had those fabricated outside, and most people think that they're done digitally, but in fact, the hand is always present in those things. So in architecture, form and function, right? We know that they're very important, but is there one that's a little bit more important to you? Well, right now I like form more. <laughs> I mean, I think form is the most exciting part, and but you have to choose a form that fits or can uh, relate to the function. Mm -hmm. So there's a constant back and forth between the two. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you analyze the function and then you think of forms that relate to it, but sometimes that form is not appropriate and you have to change the form or it can deform. And, uh, but it's a constant play between the two. But in the end, I think what people are excited about is the form and the space and the light, so the experience of it, the form yeah. is, the function is really the beginning. Mm -hmm. I always try to create things that change people's expectations about something that they already know, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of my work is about sort of reinventing or uh, reforming something that's existing. So I'll take, you know, a, a plain white wall and create a sensation that the wall is doing something that it shouldn't be doing. The, the wall starts to appear almost like fabric or it appears as if it's dripping. Everyone knows what the wall should do and how it should feel and the way that it should function and when it's not doing that thing, it creates a very sort of poignant moment where they're able to sort of reevaluate in some ways um, their entire surroundings. It's insane because you picture your piece one way, and then when people interact with it, it becomes a whole different thing. Without function, it's, it, I mean, then as pure, then it becomes pure sculpture, I think. Sure, but, I mean, uh, one could argue that the function, you know, of a sculpture is to, oh, yes. it can have a function. Often the times, you know, I sort of define it by things that are touched and things that are not touched or used, right? Um, although it was pointed out to me recently that you're allowed to touch walls <clears throat> and sometimes I install works, <clears throat> you know, that are in a wall. Mm -hmm. So at what point does the work, you know, stop and the architecture begin? You know, are, right. you, are you allowed to touch these? People touch the sculptures all the time. They just can't help themselves. That's why I like art in private homes, because you can touch them. Sure. <laughs> you said that design isn't predicated on geography. How much does this location inform uh, the design? Uh, all the work I do really has its kind of... Uh, beginning from the site. 
So this house I did in Colorado really, uh, they originally wanted, in fact, an Italian house, and I came to the site and it just demanded something that was earthy and uh, built of stone, and so we did something of stone and glass that really looked like it was rising from, the, that had been there forever. For the most part, the inspiration for a building is its location. Yes. Oh, definitely. So even this building here, it's all about the site and in framing the view out towards the water and down Collins Avenue. And, you know, people come here and they look out and they say, wow, what a great view. But in a way, it didn't exist until this frame the, was around the it. framing. So the framing and the kind of organization of the view is, creates that view. In your mind, when you're designing things, and you design things with a solution in mind, like not a resolution, but right, a real right, solution right. for a, a, an issue. It, what we're doing in this affordable prefabricated housing in Brooklyn, which we've done 300 townhouses already, and there, yes, there was that goal in mind to create housing that was affordable uh, through this pre prefabricated po process. So in a way, that was very focused, and then we had to work towards that goal. Design is only as good as the thought you put into it. It's not necessarily always, always about the materials. The architect knows that it's really not about themselves. It's about what they're doing for others. Architecture is an interesting discipline because it's, it's nothing without the person who experiences it. I think design should be applied across the board. So it's not simply limited to those who have the means, but to every level of society. The payoff is the process.